tonight is eloquent testimony of the all-round cooperation between India and the Soviet Union. The government of India appreciates the Soviet Union's generous collaboration in this field. 4th of April 1984, Indira Gandhi, India's Prime Minister, was in conversation with squadron leader Rakesh Sharma, who became the first and only Indian to enter space on board a Soviet Union Soyuz T-11 expedition. With palpable excitement in Prime Minister Gandhi's voice, she asked him several questions about his momentous trip. But one among them has been etched forever in the minds of all Indians. Sharma famously replied, <laughs> India's space ambitions have gained its enduring symbol. For the first time in this young country's history, an Indian managed to break free from the clutches of Earth's gravity and had reached where few men have reached before. Fast forward to 2008. Three, two, one, zero, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five seconds. India sends its first probe to the moon. Chandrayaan-1, becoming the first nation to find the presence of water on the moon, when the moon impact probe on board the Chandrayaan-1 orbiter descended to the designated spot on the lunar south pole, finding ice crystals, making India also the fourth country to place its flag on the moon. In 2013, India went on to send the Mars orbiter, the Mangalyaan, making India the only nation in the world to successfully reach the red planet on her first attempt. No other space organization has succeeded to reach Mars on its first attempt. I still remember the historic conversation that took place between NASA and ISRO. NASA's Mars Curiosity rover tweeted, Congratulations to ISRO and India's first interplanetary mission upon achieving Mars orbit. To which India's Mars Orbiter Twitter account replied, Howdy Mars Curiosity, keep in touch, I'll be around. What's even more gripping was that India's missions to Mars cost a fraction of NASA's 670 million MAVEN, while the Curiosity rover costing a whopping 2 billion. In comparison, India's interplanetary Mars orbiter costs less than 72 million, which ironically costs less than what it took to make the Hollywood space movie Gravity for 130 million, or The Martian for 108 million. Taking India's Jugad, a term used to define flexible, non-conventional, frugal innovation, often termed a hack, to a whole new level. We will look at this jugad used by Yisro in the latter part of this video. In 2017, India went on to break the world record by successfully placing 104 satellites in orbit. Of those 104, only 3 satellites belong to India. 96 belong to the United States, while the rest belong to Switzerland, Kazakhstan, Israel, the United Arab Emirates, and the Netherlands. For millennia, mankind has always been fascinated by the stars, planets, and beyond. India is no exception to this. After all, this is the same civilization that gave the world to zero, astronomy, astrology, and many other things. But what's unprecedented about India's space ambitions is the fact that they were considered unattainable from the very beginning. This is the classic underdog story. The Indian space aspiration began in 1957, nearly a decade after the independence of India. It was a bold idea to even think about launching something to space at that time. A space program, needless to say, is expensive. For India, who has been ravaged for thousands of years of invasions and plunder, and after winning independence recently from a blood-leaching colonial empire called Britain, it hardly made sense for it to embark on a mission to space. Why should India embark on a mission whose benefits were not clear back then? And yet this is where it all gets intriguing. Thanks to a few bold men, their foresight, and their talent to convince and maneuver heaven and earth for it, India actually ventured into its own space adventure. India, at the time, being a newly independent state, didn't have enough resources, training, or any scientific expertise in space launches. A fishing village was chosen for a space program, and believe it or not, India carried its first rockets on bicycles and bullock carts. Nonetheless, with such humble beginnings, within the first four decades after India's independence, India would go on to manufacture and launch rockets, satellites, and satellite launching vehicles, all built from scratch. In my uh, opinion, the aspect of space research, which I would like to stress most, is in relation to the national capability, the self-confidence that this will generate. There were two bold and daring scientists. Dr. Homi Baba and Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, who deemed space research to be the utmost importance which would propel India into the 21st century. They felt India could and should launch their own space program. Homi Baba is regarded as the father of Indian nuclear program, while Vikram Sarabhai is regarded as the father of Indian space program. Both these men laid the foundations of what would become one of the most ambitious space programs. Both Sarabhai and Baba set out to formally begin a space program, but the first biggest hurdle was convincing the political masters of India. They needed political allies, but not just any political ally, someone who shared their views of using science to the benefit of India. 
I don't know whether it's kismet, serendipity, or destiny. Call it what you want, but one of Baba's closest friends was none other than Nehru, who became the first Prime Minister of India. The Prime Minister gave his official consent to the idea. An Indian National Committee for Space Research, INCOSPAR, was established in 1962. INCOSPAR grew and became ISRO in 1969. India's first indigenously built satellite, the Aryabhata, was launched by the Soviet Union on the 19th of April, 1975. It took India seven years to build its own launching vehicle. The SLV-3, taking a series of four Rohani satellites to low Earth orbit, thus making India the sixth country to be capable of undertaking orbital launches. The satellite's launch at the time weighed a mere 88 pounds, around 40 kilograms. India had already begun working on a medium lift launching vehicle capable of putting 1300 pounds or 600 kilograms into orbit. This medium lift launching vehicle is named PSLV, Polar Satellite Launching Vehicle, which became a significant booster for the Indian space program. PSLV had a series of more than 50 successful flights launching hundreds of small payloads, foreign satellites, and LEO satellites. As fantastic as ISRO's journey has been, it was not without hiccups. The United States blocked India from attaining an upper stage cryogenic engine from Russian Glove Cosmos. The cryogenic engines were needed to power vehicles that would be bigger, lighter, and more efficient than its workhorse counterpart PSLV. Russia, weakened from the split, needed the West to get its economy back on track, and scrapped the deal it signed with India in future hopes of concessions from the West. Narsimha Rao, India's then Prime Minister, thundered at public meetings that India would build its own cryogenic engines. Finally, in 2008, India developed and tested the indigenous cryogenic engines which met all the parameters. It took India 15 years to develop and build the CE 7.5 cryogenic engines. These cryogenic engines powered the third stage of the GSLV, which stands for Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle, which gave India the ability to lift 11,000 or 5,000 kilograms into lower Earth orbit and 6,700 pounds or 2,700 kilograms into geostationary orbit. India would go on to develop the CE-20 cryogenic rocket engines, one of the most powerful upper-stage cryogenic engines in the world, which carried India's Chandrayaan-2 spacecraft and rover to the moon. Remember the Indian term Jugad? I used it in the beginning of the video. So what's the Jugad? Let me explain. Launching a Mars orbiter much cheaper than the movie The Martian, which ironically revolves around going to Mars, speaks a lot about India's frugal innovation. How to do much more with less is something of an art the Indians have specialized. Unlike NASA's MAVEN, which was directly catapulted beyond Earth's orbit because of its powerful rockets, so ISRO used a Jugad, where its Mars orbiter whirled around the Earth six times before flinging into space towards Mars, sort of like a slingshot. Now anyone who has ever used a slingshot can imagine the number of ways it could go wrong. And this is apart from all the millions of things that could go wrong in deep space. A little over a third of the missions to Mars have succeeded at that time. India's Mars Orbiter mission broke all records when it successfully locked into orbit on Mars September 24th, 2014. A feat that still holds to this day, becoming the first ever nation to reach Mars in first attempt. The intention of ISRO from the very beginning was never to compete with the developed world. ISRO's mission was all about simple economics and investments. ISRO's commercial arm, Antrix, is steadily aiming for the 300 billion spacecraft launch outsourcing industry, making it a competitor to SpaceX due to its low cost and high success launching rate. To this date, India has launched 342 foreign satellites from 34 different countries. And since India's space industry is entirely homegrown, it will create thousands of jobs in high-tech manufacturing and research. It was the visions of Dr. Baba and Dr. Sarabhai whose foresight in 1947 made India a prominent player among the space powers. India is slated to overtake the United States to become the second largest economy between 2030 and 2060, depending on whose reports you read, and will surpass China by the end of the 21st century or the beginning of the 22nd century. India will continue to play a vital role in space, and maybe even make humans fully interplanetary by the next century. India started her journey from bullet carts and bicycles, and today it has reached Mars with plans to send astronauts in 2023. Where do you think India and the rest of the world will be in the next decade? So we will leave it right here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Do drop a like and comment your thoughts on the space industry. And we will see you guys in the next one. Take my hand, we'll make it somehow. We can